It's time for our first prospect report of the season. Up next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT and 5 on Saturday, April 6th. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White and five prospects who are on the verge of getting the call. Jackson Holiday from the Orioles, Junior Caminero of the Rays, who is on the IL right now with a quad strain, likely out a few weeks. Ricky Tiedemann from the Blue Jays, Paul Skeens from the Pirates, and Kyle Manzardo of the Guardians. Scott, with Manzardo... DH has kind of been a revolving door for the Guardians early on in the season here. What do you mm-hmm. think the ETA is on Kyle Manzardo? Well, anytime the Guardians decide they need extra help in the lineup, because, yeah, some of the names they've been rotating through that DH spot include David Fry, Will Brennan, and Estevan Florial. So nobody they'd miss, nobody we'd miss in fantasy. Uh, and, and when they acquired Manzardo in the Aaron Savale deal with the Rays last summer, we thought, hey, that's their DH option for next year. They have, have Josh Naylor at first base already, so they must be acquiring Manzardo for DH. It was a close call rounding out that this list between Manzardo and another Guardians hitter, Chase DeLauder, who stuck around even longer in spring training and had ridiculous numbers, but he got sent to double-A to begin the year. So I think Manzardo would be called up first, you know, the lauder could come straight from double A. It happens. But I also think the Guardians want to give Tyler Freeman some runway in center field and would be less likely to fill their DH spot with somebody like the lauder who brings defensive value, hopefully. So that's where things stand with him. Uh, I want to mention here also, I want to talk about Paul Skeens a little bit because. We have talked in the past about how maybe he doesn't come up at all this year or comes up very late, preserves his rookie eligibility for next year so that the the Pirates could potentially get draft pick rewards if he if he does well in awards voting. He has to be up for his entire rookie season for that to happen. But I'm kind of leaning toward them calling him up sooner than later, and maybe at some point in May and just not worrying about the draft pick that the the draft pick rewards, the potential draft pick rewards, uh, just taking advantage of this really, you know, this this player first overall pick last year who's captured the imagination of Pirates fans and baseball fans everywhere. And part of the reason he's done that, Skeens, is because in this first start at AAA this year, he had 12 fastballs clock in at over 100 miles per hour. Only two pitchers, two major league pitchers during the entire stat cast era, Hunter Green and Jacob deGrom, have had that many 100-mile-per-hour pitches in a start. And remember, Skeens did it in just three innings. So you know he throws hard. You've heard all about that. But I I think the key is more consistently than we've ever seen, really, does he throw that hard. And the fact he only went three innings, I think, speaks to the idea that the the Pirates want him available later into the year. Obviously, they're going to have to preserve his innings. They hardly used him in spring training, and now he's kind of going through spring training. So it may be once he reaches the point where he's fully built up, that's when the Pirates decide to to bring him up. And again, that that could be some point in May. I agree with you completely. I, I think, especially with the Pirates getting off to a good start, if they want to remain competitive in that National League Central, they need Paul Skeens on their roster sooner rather than later. Five names that are on the periphery. These are players that are doing something of note recently. And we know the Orioles' AAA team scored 26 runs in a game earlier this week. We had massive games from Kyle Stowers, Heston Kierstad. The same, uh, the same problems exist. There's nowhere for those guys to play on the Orioles right now. Luis Matos of the Giants, Quinn Priester of the Pirates, and Carson Wisenhunt also of the Giants. Scott, I think Luis Matos kind of grabs my attention here because he is someone who throughout his minor league career has really been more contact-oriented, hitting for good batting average, but in the spring, he hit for a little bit more power. So far, in a very small sample in the minors, he's got two home runs in a very small sample, so kind of feels like, all right, maybe there's uh, some power here coming on the horizon for Luis Matos. Yes. Real quick, I just want to give credit where credit is due. I got that Paul Skeen stat about the hundred mile per hour number of 100-mile-per-hour fastballs from MILB.com. They do good work there. Okay. Luis Matos, yes, 
He was great in the minors last year, but the exit velocities were bad and it didn't translate to much power in the majors. But already this year, four home runs in spring training and and two, uh, he had a two homer game the other day for AAA Sacramento. We don't have exit velocity readings from this spring. They weren't available in the Cactus League, but those two homers for on Wednesday for Sacramento, 103 miles per hour, both traveled more than 400 feet. And if you watch the video of them, they are their impressive looking home runs. So I'm hopeful Luis Matos is, is adding strength to go along with those contact skills and still has a very high end outcome for the Giants. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the Odyssey app, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in Five, and we will be back again next week. Bye bye. 